Can you hear me? Yay! <laughs> well, good morning. Um, I am Audrey Heather. Um, I don't know if some of you know me. If you don't, well, I'm Audrey. <laughs> and um, hi, I'm blessed to be here this morning. Um, I'm married to BJ. Um, yeah. <laughs> And uh, just a little bit about kind of me is we've been married 17 years, and I know, going on 18, actually, in October. I just can't believe it, how quickly it goes. And we have two girls, um, Laura, who is 10, and um, Vera, who is um, 4. And they are the apple of our eye, and so we stay busy between ministry and just being a mom and working. But Marilee had asked me to share in February my testimony. And my first answer to her was no. <laughs> and to my defense, I hate the spotlight. I hate being up here. Um, and then too, I work. I, I, I have a cleaning business, so um, I clean houses. So between, that's a lot of energy that it takes to clean. Between that and just being a wife and a mom, it can be overwhelming. But um, so I said no. And we're all there as a family talking, and, and it's a little awkward, and we're making small talk. And Gerald goes, well, um, could, I, could, I have, could I say something? I go, of course, you can talk to me about anything. He goes, I really feel like you should do it. And as he said that, <laughs> the Lord was speaking to my heart saying, I've called you, be obedient. And, you know, it gives room for God to give glory what he's done in my life. So here I am. <laughs> So Marilee's been um, preaching, well, teaching, um, out of Acts, and um, it's all about Paul, well, so much more than just Paul, but Paul is continually um, talking about his testimony, right, and Acts and what God's done in his life and um, the power that God's done in him and through him, and it's powerful. So I'm going to share my testimony, um, but um, before we do that, let's just pray right? Lord, um, I invite you here this morning. I know you want to say something to your ladies, so just come and speak. Speak to us. Bolden me. Strengthen me. Um, I'm your vessel, so just fill this place with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Warning, I will cry. <laughs> I am a crier. I just can't get over it. I've tried not to, but you know what? This is me. I'm a crier. <laughs> um, so I'm going to be in Revelation chapter 12, um, verse 10 through 11. You guys don't have to go there. But it says, um, Then I heard a loud voice saying in, say, saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come for the accuser of the brethren who accuses them before our God day and night has been cast down and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony and they did not love their lives to the death. That's powerful. Very powerful. For the, so the first thing there, what is it, ladies? The power, I mean the blood of the lamb, right? First and foremost, that is the great news that we have. What Jesus did on the cross, through his death and his resurrection, has set us free. And that's our good news. The second part of that is what? Our testimony. It is so powerful what God has done in your life. Because no one can take that away. No one can personally take away what the Lord's done in your life. So my story is I grew up in Twin Falls, Idaho. <laughs> I had a wonderful mother um, my dad was a firefighter. My mother was a stay-at-home mom. She did have a degree. Um, I had two older brothers. And um, we were, you know, we went to church every Sunday. And it just looked like the all-American family. Um, and everything looked picture perfect. Yet my dad was very abusive, physically and emotionally, to my mother and then he was to my oldest brother and to myself. My middle brother, he did. I don't know why. <laughs> it's just a weird thing. But um, so inside, was a, there was a lot of trauma, a lot of issues. Um, 
And, um, you know, my dad still won't admit that he was abusive. I don't know why, because it's only holding him back. It's just sad. So I grew up in an abusive home. Going into um, the kindergarten, my parents went through a divorce. My mom was pretty much um, almost at a nervous breakdown, and she couldn't take it any longer. So I remember six years old, my parents were going through a divorce, and um, it was, I was overwhelmed going to school. Um, there were side effects from the abuse. I had um, speech issues. It's just humbling. And then I had learning disabilities. You know what? Could someone get me some tissue? <laughs> oh, right there. Here, I'll get them. It gives me a minute to catch my breath. <laughs> I hate bringing that part up, but it needs to be said because it's my story. <laughs> And so, <laughs> so it was heavy. I had speech issues, learning disabilities. Um, and then on top of it, I was bullied as a kid. Um, as a kid, my teeth went black. So I had to go under for surgery and they put silver caps over my teeth. <laughs> so I looked like a rapper. <laughs> so it was just like, you know, the blessings were raining down upon me. You know, I was dealing with trauma at home, bullied at school. Then here I have, you know, this girl in my mouth. <laughs> but, um, so yeah, just dealing, you know, it was a struggle and overwhelmed as a little kid. Um, but God was near. Um, and then um, kind of as we settle in to things, um, a few years after the divorce, my mom ended up getting cancer. And it was just kind of another thing. And um, I remember they were warning us that she was basically the first case in our city that had breast cancer. I think she was like 34 or 32. And um, they didn't know a whole lot about it. So they were prepping us kids, um, you know, saying that your mom could go home to be with the Lord. And so just, um, just heavy, right? <laughs> But junior high rolled around, and um, I came into myself. Um, I was really popular, and I had a lot of friends, and started doing well academically. And so, um, yeah, everything looked great. Um, and the Lord spoke to my mom um, when I was 15. She, the Lord impressed on my mom that Audrey's not doing well you need to um, get her away from her friends. And she wrestled with this for two weeks. She ended up fasting and praying. And she, the Lord was right. I was not doing well. I was on the weekends getting drunk and partying and just really headed down a really bad path. She had no clue. And she wrestled with it for two weeks, just fasting and she's like, I'm going to be obedient to what the Lord's called me to do. Um, and so she pulled me out of school two months before eighth grade graduation. And she goes, the Lord told me that you're not, something's going on with you, that you're not in a good place. And so you're going to stay with your grandparents on the weekdays. And then on the weekends, I'm going to come and pick you up. Because she was a single parent, you know, she couldn't be there and be with me at the house. So she's, her plan was, I'm going to drive you an hour away to your grandparents' house, and you can stay with them for a week. And um, then I'll pick you up on the weekend. And Audrey, basically, I went to boot camp with my mom and my grandma. And the whole time, they um, were preaching at me. And um, <laughs> I was only allowed to go to youth group and church and... Um, it was so good because I wasn't in a good place. And as soon as they started controlling my life, you know, the issues started coming out. Like I just had so much anger and I was difficult. 
I remember my mom had to put alarm on my door. And she goes, and if you start sneaking out, I'm going to put bars on your windows. Like, she definitely got in the trenches with me. And that's what I needed because I was headed down a really dark path. Um, and this whole time, the Lord's softening my heart. I wasn't quite there yet. Um, but um, I remember one of the nights I was at my grandma's house. And, you know, ladies, we, we don't, we, we deal with, we don't fight against flesh and blood, right? We definitely, have, there's a lot of spiritual warfare, and I was under so much spiritual warfare. And one of the nights in particular, I was, um, I got woken up out of a deep sleep, and I knew a demon was in the room. And I could not, um, I could not speak, I could not move. And I remember, you know, being taught that if that happens, you claim in the name of Jesus, I command you to leave. Well, I couldn't even do that because I didn't even have a voice. So I was just terrified, just praying that this fear and this oppression would just leave this evil identity. And um, finally it leaves, and I'm just there in my room, just terrified, wondering, you know, oh my gosh, overwhelmed. Finally went to bed. Well, before I could get out of bed, my grandma came into my room, and she said, um, your mom is on the phone, and she'd like to talk to you. I said, okay. So I answer it, and my mom goes, are you okay? And I'm like, mm-hmm. She goes, well, I just want you to know, Audrey, that the Lord woke me up last night. And told me, you were not okay and that I needed to pray for you. So I've been praying for you all night. And it was powerful to me. Even though I've been hearing about the Lord, I saw firsthand the power that we have as believers. The power that my mom had that was given that wisdom from the Lord. Because I was not in a good place. And so right then, the Lord's just softening my heart towards him and seeing the power of a God-fearing woman on display. Yet I wasn't willing. So I want to tell you, ladies, the power that you hold, don't forget it, right? We know the Lord. We have such, I mean, we have everything knowing the Lord. So my heart's being softened. Um... And the whole time, so then um, ninth grade's coming up, it's the school year. My mom said, you're, I'm putting you in private Christian school. Um, and so I ended up going to a whole new different school around my Christian friends. Was only allowed to um, go to youth group and kind of, she controlled who I hung out with. And it was good. It may seem extreme, and I know... Um, my old friends came from good homes, so to say, and they thought my mom, I don't know if they thought my mom was crazy, but they definitely called and um, was willing to take me in, you know, and they'd all switch me every two weeks. I'd switch in with the homes and all that, and my mom just said, no, this is, this is my child, and this is what needs to be done, and um, they were good families, really well-known people in the community, and um, it's kind of crazy because um, after this all had come about, they started having problems with their kids, and one of the moms was a really well-known counselor, and she ended up, she said that she, I could stay with them for, you know, for, stay with them. She found out, you know, how I was going to private school, and she ended up calling my mom later on, and she said, how did you know? How did you know that the girls were not in a good place? And my mom right then and there said, it's because the Lord told me. And she got a witness to her. So here I am going into ninth grade at a private Christian school, just a whole different life, new friends. And I remember it was like yesterday. Um, it was on my 16th birthday, and we decided... Um, not we just we were doing a youth group trip up um, in Boise, Idaho. We were going to be spending the weekend snowboarding. 
And um, the whole time, my heart's being softened. I'm not there. And I'm, we decide to do a night ski. And as I'm snowboarding um, on this mountain, headed back to my condo, and laughing with my girlfriends, the Lord um, showed up. And he became very personable to me, personal to me. And he touched my heart, and he just said, you know, Audrey, um, I'm your father, and I have so much better for you, and I love you. And it just, I went from laughing to all of a sudden crying in the presence of the Lord, seeing that God became very personal to me right then and there. And it was no longer what my mom had been sharing with me my whole life. My grandma has been sharing with me no longer became what I've been hearing at Sunday school. But I felt, I, I experienced the Lord that day, and I gave my heart to the Lord on my 16th birthday. <laughs> and my life hasn't been the same since. I have given my life, given my, given my life over to the Lord ever since and just wanted to serve him. And he changed me, and he's done a work in me. Um, so I began, I ended up graduating um, school after the ninth grade. Academics were not for me. It's something that my mom and I discussed, and so I ended up getting my HSE at the local college there. So I began working full-time, and I worked at my church. I um, was a janitor. I'm always cleaning. <laughs> it seems like my life, I've always done that. And I was the lunch lady. Um, they had a private Christian school in, in the church there, so I was the kids' lunch lady. And it was just a time where um, the Lord was preparing me for future ministry and a time where I was just growing and I had a great group of friends. And, um, you know, just God had a plan and was raising me up and, and doing a work. Um, I'm going to share out of Isaiah um, chapter 55, 8 through 9. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor my ways, nor your ways my ways, says the Lord. Um, as far as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. So, just young, wanting to serve the Lord, and <laughs> fast forward, I'm 20. And BJ comes back into my life. <laughs> and he's 20 also, and um, we're, um, he's always liked me <laughs> ever since I've known him. And we are 20, and we fall in love and get married. And just had a quick wedding. Um, and, you know, BJ, I was 20 going on 30 when we got married. <laughs> And BJ was very 20. <laughs> he was all boy, and he, he sang in a hardcore band, and that was his passion, and hanging out with friends, and video games, and TV. So, you know, we both had a lot of growing to do, and um, we're, you know, here we are, just we're young, dumb, and poor. <laughs> um, but God had a plan and was doing something through us, right? Um, and then, um, five years into our marriage, um, BJ's dad gets cancer and passes away suddenly. And so that was just a big blow to the family. And then six months after his dad passed, my mom passed. So here we were, our lives kind of turned upside down. My mom was my best friend. And here he, his dad was his best friend. But God used it. A way that I could honor my mom was turning into a godly woman. So it lit that fire underneath me to serve the Lord. 
So we just started praying and had a stirring that God wanted to do something different in our lives. Um, see, so we had come out to Yucca for Gerald and Mary Lee's wedding. And I thought that Yucca was like the Wild West. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't like it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you know, the dirt roads, the no, the no street lights. And um, so we, we were having a stirring, and I remember it so vividly. And I'm like, okay, let's just pray. We knew that God wanted to do something. And um, one of the... And the whole time, we're feeling the stirring. Gerald's calling BJ and saying, well, if you come out here, I'll raise you up. See, BJ shared at his dad's funeral, and Gerald recognized that BJ had a calling on his life. So we talked, and we were like, okay, well, yeah, let's do a quick weekend trip to Yucca and just fill it out. <laughs> So we did, and we came out here, and I loved the desert. I ended up falling in love with Yucca. I had a whole different look on it. And we ended up putting an offer on a home, and it was during the recession. Um, and I remember the realtor telling us, you know, um, you're not going to hear back from the bank for a month or two. So we said, okay. We put our offer in on Saturday. Um, Monday, when we were back in Idaho, we, um, the banks got back to us, our realtor got to us and said that they accepted your loan. So it happened really fast, and we knew that God was calling us here. So here we, we put our home up for sale, and we leave everything that we know to come out to Yucca Valley. <laughs> and I remember as we're driving in this yellow Pinsky truck, and just leaving everything that I had known the last 25 years. And as we're driving in here, just having that pit in my stomach, wondering if we made the right decision. So BJ got a job here. So here we are in Yucca. We bought a home. We got a fantastic deal. God hooked us up on that. And um, BJ got a job as the assistant sound guy and helping in the youth. And I worked in the thrift store, which was a sweet time because I got to meet a lot of you guys. And um, we just came here with no expectations. Um, we had no agenda. We were just happy we could pay our bills. <laughs> and we wanted to just do what God called us to. And so we were obedient in that. And I can't, I would have never have guessed 12 years ago when we left everything, stupid, dumb kids, <laughs> what God had in store for us. Here I am today sharing with you on a lady study, being stretched and growing in the Lord and being raised up. And I could have never seen BJ be the assistant to Gerald. And just what an awesome pastor he's turned into. How good. <laughs> How God has taken this punk 20 year old kid <laughs> and matured him and given him changed him. It's exciting to see. Um, and now <laughs> my biggest blessings are my two girls, right? Laura, who is 10, and Laura is just a sweetheart. She's been a blessing since she's been born, and she just likes to be our buddy. She, she just likes to hang out with her dad and I, and um, right now she's learning life lessons. 
Um, and she's learning that life isn't so pretty, and we're trying to protect her innocence, yet still teach her things, and it's hard. But the greatest thing is she loves the Lord. And she prays for people, and she has strong convictions. And that's my biggest blessing, right? If my kids know the Lord, then I feel like I've made it. <laughs> And then there's Vera. <laughs> Vera came into our picture, and we were told that she was a boy. <laughs> and when I found out she was a girl, I was crying because I was not happy about that. <laughs> I was planning that that was a boy and I could be done with two. <laughs> but God knew what we needed with Vera. She is so perfect, and she's so sweet, but she's full of life. <laughs> I, I think, like, she has a soundtrack in her mind because when she walks, she just doesn't walk. She, she's bopping and she's hopping, and there's so much life in just her just walking. And everything she says is so cute. But what's great about Vera is she's being raised up, and she knows the Lord. And she prays every night. She prays if I'm not feeling well. She prays every night for her list of people, and some of you are on that list and she prays for Pastor Burrito. <laughs> we have no clue who Pastor Burrito is. <laughs> but she prays for him, and it's so sweet. And God's entrusted me with these two little girls. And everything that I learned from my mom and my grandma, I get to teach them. And he's entrusted me with these two little girls. And I feel like if they love the Lord, then they have it all, because everything else will follow. So ladies, my story is God's faithfulness. My testimony is just God always being there, near and dear, through the, through the fear, through the, the little girl dealing with fear and anxiety to raising me up. He's always been there, you know? He's been through the abuse, through the capped teeth, through the awkwardness, through the rebellion, the confusion, through the trauma, through the death of my mom. My testimony is that God has a plan and he is faithful. You know, and it'll be interesting to see what God does in five, ten years, twenty years from now, right? And you too will have a testimony. I mean, you already have a testimony of God's faithfulness, and have you shared it? And our testimonies are going to completely change, going to completely change. But I want to encourage you today, if you're going through a hard time, God is such a personal God. He's such a good God. And he wants to show up. And he wants to tell you that. He's faithful. He's got it. He's got you. So in closing, I just want to, um, I'm going to pray, but when you guys get together in your groups, um, I want you to share with each other a time that you know that God has showed up and been faithful in your life. Because I think we need to share. Let me just pray for you. Lord, I thank you for your ladies here, and I just pray that you would be here in their fellowship and you would minister and encourage, and um, just this would be a sweet time. And go before them, love on them, encourage them. In Jesus' name, amen.